<laughs> okay, and moving on to the uh, moving on a little bit later on to these years, uh, I want to say it's maybe the end, middle of the end of 2012. <laughs> okay, um, now correct me if I'm wrong, but in the middle of 2011, going into 2012, shock value. Shock value. Shock. <laughs> shock. Yeah, that's and that's exactly why I'm asking about it. Shock. I mean, you and I, you know, you you and I talked about. Uh, putting together maybe an album cover. I mean, I think I'm, I made an album cover for you, but at the same time, that it was more of just a promotional, just a promotional spick, if you will, uh, for Shock Value. What happened when Shock Value was scrapped? Like, what what happened with that? Was it a creative uh, difference, or just like what happened? Okay. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I had a knack for putting all my eggs in one basket mm -hmm. and after a little while you know it didn't occur to me you know what I'm saying? When, when you're the only person that's like running the robot and everything else and you have to do everything some things slip your mind you know what i'm saying you can't run both around by yourself it's sad to admit but you can't but uh that is true well, <laughs> well i uh Something happened to where my computer, you know, all my data just fried <laughs> itself, and I lost all my music. And uh, the things that I had done for Shock Value and more were all on it. And, yeah, just lost them forever. I recovered a couple of things, but, like, the, the amount of time and the blood, sweat, and tears that was just put into that, like, I was drained at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you just burnt out. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, man, so after I got everything back that I could get back, I was just like, you know what, that's okay. It could be a sign. I'm just going to leave it alone and just let everything sit where it is. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. I mean, sometimes, you know, you got to let that, you know, that sink, that ship just sink, though, because, you know, when you put all your eggs in one basket, I mean, you can't make an omelet out of something that's soggy and wet and made out yeah. of salt. So... Yeah, Shock Value, you know, you've the only two uh, things that came out of Shock Value were listeners and the real talent uh, promo that you put out. And going from there, though, you know, you just, some randomness came out of it, though. I mean, you got Lose My Mind and Why You Why you Mad, you know, those are the free verse remixes. But then you get you goes, you get into something with Miss Kissa. You did you did a little bit of collaboration with her. Uh, uh, it's Miss Kissa. Miss Kisa, okay, my bad, Kisa. I am very sorry if I if I if I mispronounce it though. Just it's it's one in the morning here in Texas, but it's like two it's two twenty in the morning over here in a, in in a Columbus. But yeah, Miss Kisa, you and Miss Kisa got it. How did that uh, come together? Well, Kisa and I have been friends since the early MySpace days. You know what I'm saying? And like we'd always check out each other's stuff, and we'd always say like, Yo, one day. We're gonna we're, we're gonna do something, and that day came, and I I don't know we we were chopping it up on the phone one day, and I'm just like you know, uh, I was going through some shit, and she was just like yo I was going through the same shit not too long ago, I'm just like, yeah man we this is bullshit you know like, hell yeah, so like uh <laughs> one day you know I got off the phone with her and and it, the. I call it the dragon whenever I'm making music and everything. I think the dragon took hold, you know, and I started flying. I started surfing and everything, and, you know, I breathed a little bit of fire, and that's what happened right there. What's up was born, and I sent it her away. I was just like, give that a listen. She was just like, dude, dude, give give me, like, at least, like, two, three weeks top, and I'll send it back to you. I'm just like, do your thing. She did it. The shit was awesome, man. It was gold, and, um... She put it on her uncontrollable album, and uh, that got like a lot of attention and stuff. And uh, yeah, man, that's what that's what happened. So that's cool, though. I mean, because it's not a very it's not very often you get to see you know two best friends you know from you know doesn't matter if it's your childhood or just maybe you know from high school or something like that though you know actually going around and trying to you know chase the dream together, you know. So what you know so what's up you know does its own thing. Um, can you explain anything in between <laughs> my dick and the untitled shame? <laughs> because it seems like they go together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, well, I gotta say that I put out a another mixtape and I called it Need for the Needy. Right, and I was going right into that, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the Lose My Mind joint, uh, the free verse 
was originally Young Jeezy, and I did something wrong because that Young Jeezy is, is is amazing. You know what I'm saying? He's like one of my favorite freaking rappers. You know, because he's real with it. You know, he's not out here like just doing shit just to do it. You know what I'm saying? But um, <clears throat> I did it. I did that, and then at a certain point, I just started to just go and just explore more. And I'm just like, all right, I've been doing this type of style for a long time. Why can't I just do something that's strictly just, you know, hip hop, you know, something that in which I'm just going everywhere, but I'm in one place, but lyrically I'm going everywhere. Like, why not? Why can't I do that, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And why uh, needs for the needy? What what was that? What was the name behind that though? This, mind you, it's it's 2012 at this point though, and <laughs> it's 2012 at this point though. You know, we've skipped you know skipped ahead, and this is around the time. Uh, let's see. This matter of fact, I'm looking at the release date though. It's a couple of days after Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, uh, in the year 2012. You know how we all had that little Mayan apocalypse scare and all that shit. Yeah, the whole uh, the rapture bullshit though. Matter of fact, I actually, <laughs> a matter of fact, I was actually working a show the day the rapture was supposed to happen. <laughs> okay, dude, I'm not even gonna lie. I was scared shitless, bro. Like I was literally like thinking like this is it, this is it. So I uh I don't know. Like I was just paranoid for no damn reason. So I'm just like I'm like all right. If this is my last year of being alive, I'm going to go out with a bang. You know what I'm saying? Music, show, everything. I'm just going to go hard. Well, in the midst of me recording, you know, some of my equipment just breaks. And I'm just like, no, because, uh, one, the struggle is real. You know what I'm saying? I just spent all that I had on this shit, like, you know, weeks ago, renewing everything. And I'm just like, all right, all right, it's cool. I'm just like I'm not gonna stun. I'm not even gonna. Uh, I'm not even gonna be all out of it and sad or anything. I know what I'm gonna do. I am going to take all of the free verses or whatever that I feel are presentable and put them all on a compilation type of mixtape thing and just push that so that I may use the proceeds to revamp my studio equipment. You know what I'm saying? Basically, just scrap it up, just to, um, you know, put put everything back into how do you say your budget? Yeah, basically, you know, because like I would never ever solely do what I do for the dividend, but if I was to do it, I would definitely use it for a good cause. You know what I'm saying? As far as like studio goes, as far as like hooking up uh, my family with things that they need to survive and everything. Else. And I got to say that God is good because not only was I able to get new studio equipment, but, you know, my, my, my listeners and everything else made it possible for me to just, like, do a full upgrade and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm forever thankful for that. <laughs> God bless indeed. I know what you mean. And, you know, since then, you know, you know you've know, you literally gone, you know, from scrub to premium at this point, just from going to the bottom, you know, literally at the bottom of the barrel and then just – you know, working your way to where you're at right now. I mean, even though you know you're probably not at where you want to be, you know, definitely not. It's you know, every artist will tell you this though. You know, any kind of person who's a free agent will tell you that whenever you're putting this, when you're when you're putting this dream together, you know, it's never ever ever easy. And you know, from there, you know, from there on, though, the needy, the needs for the needy though had boosted six up, you know, to a plus premium portion. Now. The next question I was going to go to before I get this question started is, if you know both me and Six on a personal level, you'll both know that both Six and I are both very avid coffee drinkers. Very, very, very avid Java. And Bean juice, man. Yeah, I know. Bean juice, man. I can tell you that right now. It's, it's the shit, though. And I know – and I can tell you this right now, though. When you drink coffee – if you go from you know from drinking coffee though, a person will tell you this like either you just need a little bit of kick to your day or it shows a sign of you actually growing up a little bit more. And I, yeah, my family is the one who told me that though, and I get the feeling that coffee talk was a little bit more of a growing up release. I mean, definitely was definitely was for the simple fact that uh, I got into concepts more, you know. Really? Can you get it? Can you elaborate? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. No, uh, well, Coffee Talk is the title itself is a concept within itself. You know, uh, it's lyrical caffeine. You know, power words, uh, activate words that you hear and you instantly want to just go ape shit. But at the same time, when it goes up, you know, with the black coffee and everything else, your extra sugar and shit. Yeah, all right, just turn it up. But then afterwards, you wanna you wanna chill. You know, you wanna put some lightener in there. And you just wanna vibe it out. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, yeah. It's one of those things that you just have to. You just have to, you know, when when you take a sip out of your first cup of coffee, though, you know, it's supposed to be nice and refreshing. But as the day goes by, though, man, you got to have a little bit of jolt to get you through your day. So, you need some stock, man. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Coffee Talk, you know, comes around. And um, coffee, what would you say was the, the highlight of uh, Coffee Talk? The highlight? I mean, because I know, you know, myself and someone I used to date, you know, you know, submitted you some ideas, mainly in terms of, you know, album covers of in album art, though. But what would you say was the highlight of both Coffee Talk, you know, the creation, and as far as the music goes? The highlight of the creation was the simple fact that I was actually up and alert and everything else. Like, of course, I was drinking coffee throughout the whole shit. But I'm saying, like. It was the most up, the the most the most content and alert that I had been in a very long time, like of of just making art, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like I was uh, twelve years old again, and I'm working on my own like comic book and stuff, and I'm turning the next page and stuff. Like with every song that I did, I called it like a page or whatever. But with in in terms of coffee talk, I called them cups, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, you know, I, 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 I would get done with the first cup or whatever, and then, like, sometime later, I'm just like, all right, you know, let's open up our mind and stuff and, and, and make sure we got the right ingredients to brew the second cup. And um, I can honestly say, though, I I want to do a, a re-release of Coffee Talk for the simple fact that I, I, I don't know. I don't feel like it was at its, at its purest form, you know what I'm saying? In other words, you're trying to make cocaine instead of coffee this time. <laughs> uh, I mean, sometimes you just have to go for an eight ball. Uh, no. no, but what I'm trying to say is, um, uh, you know, you you want you wanted to make it as most as complete as you can, basically. Yeah, but I feel like I, there are some things that I could have done better. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, my thing is, if they like it. I won't touch it. But if if they are open, if their ears are open, and they would like uh, a uh, a double shot, I'd be more than happy to just give it to them. And you know what? I can't go wrong with a double shot though. I mean, I like my coffee instant with milk and with a little bit of water and about two cups of sh two spoons of sugar. I like my coffee in the tumbler with a white woman holding it. That's not wrong at all. If you ask me, I think that's very right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Denise Austin from Lifetime. Yeah, y'all know about that Denise Austin. I know that did. Ooh, we're, now we're digging deep there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I guess I can say the next thing I can say about right now with coffee, going from coffee talk is what's what's being what's being created as of now. <laughs> 